Sound attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please. The representative of His Majesty the King is now arriving. Will the audience please rise and remain standing until after the national anthems are played and the opening prayer is completed. Honors to the representative of His Majesty the King will now be given. Also going forward in the spirit of sacrificial love. To give it the last for others. For the people I served with. For freedom in Europe. And for freedom around the world. Today we continue to fight for peace as friends and allies. As we begin this ceremony, I ask that you would bow your heads and pray with me. Father God, the cost of freedom is high. But you have set us free for the sake of freedom. Freedom to love others and to serve the world around us with peace and compassion. Teach us to love and to live like that. We pray that you would teach us to honor these men and women with how we live our lives. That we would honor their sacrifices by continually striving to work for peace. Defend the downtrodden. Display strength in the face of oppressive aggression and promote peace in our world. 
Lord God, we also thank you for the families who gave so much. They never got to say goodbye to their soldier, Marine, sailor, or airman. Help us to honor their sacrifices today as well. We know that for decades, these families, mothers, fathers, wives, children, and friends, have all lived with a loss that can never be replaced. Continue to heal them, bless them, and encourage them. And Father, we pray for peace. The world remains a dangerous place with wars, hatred, greed, and the desire to rule over others. In the midst of this, teach us to be peacemakers through strength, resilience, and patience. Protect those suffering from the war to our east. Turn back the oppressor and help us remain steadfast in our support of the Ukrainian people. As we honor those who gave their lives, watch over and bless this ceremony. Be with the people of the United States, the Netherlands, and indeed all the people of the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Opening remarks will now be given by American Battle Monuments Commissioner and Medal of Honor recipient, Florent Groberg. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Representative of His Majesty the King, Rear Admiral Lukert Bumlar, Chasse d'Affaires, Maria Verlo, Prime Minister Mark Rote, distinguished guests, military officers, veterans, family, and friends. My name is Florent Groberg. I am a medically retired Army officer who served in a war in Afghanistan. And today, this weekend, is incredibly important to me. Over my course and my deployments, I'd like to call out the names of some very dear friends that I lost on August 8, 2012. Commander Sergeant Major Griffin, Major Gray, Major Kennedy, and Enrique Abdel Fattah. I am the privilege to have the opportunity and the humble honor to serve as a commissioner for the American Battle Monuments Commission. On behalf of our chairman and all the men and women who maintain these sacred grounds, I welcome you to this Memorial Day ceremony at the Netherlands American Cemetery. It is a real pleasure and honor for us to have in attendance today nine members of the greatest generation. Ms. Kay, Ms. May Creer, and original Rosie the Riveter, Seaman First Class Carl Tringoli, United States Navy, Army Staff Sergeant Tech 5, Dominique Critelli, 95th Infantry Division, Dr. Richard Heinel, Army Corporal in the 94th Infantry Division, Army Corporal David Marshall in the 84th Infantry Division, Yeoman Third Class Peter Pascal, United States Navy, Machinist Mate Third Class Bill Nadejovich, United States Navy, Private First Class Arbil Enriquez, 337 Bomb Squadron, United States Army Air Corps, Army, Perf Army Private First Class George Chempa, 607th Grace Registration Company. Please join me in thanking these eight World War II veterans and special guests for their service with a round of applause. Today, across the world, Americans celebrate Memorial Day together with our foreign partners. Paying tribute to our war dead, Though we can never fully repay the debt we owe these fallen comrades, we can, and we must, continue to honor their sacrifice. Here, we pay tribute to more than 10,000 Americans who gave their lives for the cause of freedom and who are memorialized on these hallowed grounds. We remember that this terrible conflict ended only because of men and women willing to answer the call, to put their civilian lives on hold to join something that is bigger than themselves. For most of them, it was the first time they had ever left the United States. 
And for those resting here today, this foreign soil will become their final home. Of these soldiers is technical Sergeant John Kane of Revere, Massachusetts. With the 26th Infantry Regiment, he's fought his way across North Africa and Normandy, where he was wounded multiple times. During the Battle of Matur, Tunisia, he captured and destroyed a German machine gun nest and saved a large, large portion of his company from destruction. For this outstanding feat of bravery, he was awarded the Silver Star. Near, near the end of the war, he found himself in the hardest fight yet in the depths of Hurton Forest, where he was killed in action on November 17, 1944. He rests now under these skies in Plot L, Row 10, Grave 9. On Memorial Day 2022, we remember and we pay tribute to the courage and sacrifice of these men and women. We gather here today, as we have in previous years, to ensure that the torch of freedom continues to burn bright and that these men and women will live on in the hearts and minds of our grateful nations. Next year, ABMC will be celebrating its centennial anniversary, having faithfully kept a one-on-year promise to the families of our fallen, that the sacrifice of their loved ones would always be remembered and their memories will never die. That mission is timeless and we are proud to carry it forward into the commission's second century. ABMC cemeteries around the world are more than final resting places. They are the stories of our free nations, the legacies of our families, and they represent the diversities and values of who we are as people. As it was their duty to fight, so it is our duty to remember. On this day and every day, from across the Atlantic Oceans and over many lands, we come together to fulfill the promise of our first chairman, General John J. Pershing, that time will not dim the glory of their deeds. Thank you for being here for this Memorial Day commemoration to honor the brave individuals who gave their lives for our freedom and the freedom of others. An address will now be given by the Honorable Mario Verloop, the United States Charge Affair to the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Good afternoon. For 77 years, Americans, Dutch, visitors from all over the world have gathered here on Memorial Day. For the first time in three years, we're able to gather in the numbers that truly reflect the immutable veneration that we have for those who paid the ultimate price fighting for the freedom of Europe, fighting for our shared values. On this day, more than any other day, as we stand witness to the deadly struggle of brave Ukrainians fighting for their own freedom, we are starkly reminded of that price. So we convene today to remember those who fell in battle and are forever interred here in Margraten. Corporal David Marshall, here with us today, made quick friends during training with another member of his battalion, George Smith, known to his friends as Smitty. On Corporal Marshall's 20th birthday, they both shipped out for the United Kingdom. After further training, both Smitty and Corporal Marshall landed on Omaha Beach and moved on to Gulpen here in the Netherlands, just a few minutes down the road. Sadly, Smitty was hit by a German shell and never made it home. Smitty, like too many others, rests here in this cemetery. Corporal Marshall, we will never forget your brave service during the war or Smitty's. He may not be with us here today, but his story lives on. Like Smitty, many service members pass through these hills, and each has a unique story worth remembering. Private George Briette helped liberate Limburg in September 1944. Sadly, he was killed by a mine just over the border in Germany on November 17, 1944, at the age of 23. Corporal Richard F. Wells, originally from Cherry Creek, New York, was shot on September 9th, 1944, while doing reconnaissance work along the Albert Canal, just across the border in Belgium. He was only 20 years old. 
These young men were taken at too young an age and now rest in the very ground they helped liberate. I am grateful to them just as I am profoundly grateful to every single service member interred here. Today, we honor the legacy and sacrifice of Smitty, Private Bruyette, Corporal Wells, and every service member who paid the ultimate price. They have not been forgotten. It is our responsibility to always remember and pass on the stories of our fallen service members. For this reason, I am thankful to all our Dutch friends and the young people here today. Now I'm going to speak directly to our Dutch friends for a moment. Ik zou graag één moment in acht willen nemen om mijn dankbaarheid te uiten. Aan de Nederlandse regering en premier Rutte bedankt we al een lange tijd kunnen rekenen op uw steun voor deze herdenking. Ik dank ook elke Nederlandse burger die de tijd heeft genomen om hier te komen om de gave te bezoeken. Ik waardeer ook de andere eerbetonen. Zoals de talloze bloemen of de verzamelde foto's van onze soldaten op de gave. Het ongaat ons niet dat u onze gevallen soldaten niet vergeet. Daarom, zoals deze, onderstrepen de nauwe samenwerking en vriendschap tussen onze beide landen. In de fast-paced world we find ourselves in, we often do not make the time to pause and reflect. On behalf of the people of the United States and the US government, thank you for taking the time to join us as we honor our fallen service members and reflect on the freedoms we enjoy thanks to their courage and sacrifice. May they rest in peace. May they never be forgotten. Thank you. An address will now be given by Prime Minister Mark Hoot. Ladies and gentlemen, white crosses as far as the eye can see. Endless waves of white lines washing over the green hills of Margate. It's a sight that takes your breath away. A sight that makes you lost for words. It's beautiful and heartbreaking. Every white cross, every star of David, every name on the walls of the missing represents a fallen hero. A soldier, a tank commander, a pilot or a nurse but also a dear son, a beloved wife, an adored father or a close friend. Mostly young people, often only in their early 20s. American men and women who served and fell on European soil, who paid the highest price while fighting for our freedom. Young people like Edward Norton and James Norton Jr from Conway, South Carolina, better known as the Norton Twins. After completing their training on the 17th of May, 1943, the twins flew their first mission over occupied Europe. Edward as a pilot and James beside him as co-pilot. They flew at zero altitude, just above the ground to drop their bombs as accurately as possible and to minimize the chance of civilian casualties. It was extremely brave, but also highly dangerous because it made them vulnerable to German anti-aircraft fire. And that proved fatal. The Norton Twins plane was hit over the Dutch coastal town of Eimuiden and crashed into the North Sea. Edward and James died as they had lived, side by side, inseparable. And yet it was in death that they were separated for the first time. James is buried here in Margrave, plot P, row 16, grave number four. Edward's body was never found. 
His name is on the walls of the missing. The Norton twins will never be forgotten, nor will any of the 8,288 American service personnel buried here and their 1,722 comrades on the walls of the missing. We will remember their names. We will remember their stories. And we will remember their sacrifices. And that's not just an abstract promise. I applaud the work of all the Dutch volunteers who are recording the personal stories of the fallen, who are trying to find a picture of every person buried here so it can be attached to their grave or their name, who are caring for the graves and keeping in contact with the next of kin. It illustrates the deep connection between our past and our present, between the Netherlands and the United States. And it illustrates the immense gratitude we still feel. Today, I believe that feeling is stronger than ever. Because today, as war rages on our continent, we realize that living in peace is not a given. That freedom does not come free. Freedom comes at a cost. It was true more than 75 years ago. And it is still true today. Every name and grave here in Margate reminds us not to take our freedom for granted. Not to forget the ultimate sacrifice so many young people. But to remember every one of them and to hand down their stories to future generations. We owe it to the fallen. We owe it to their families. We owe it to ourselves. Thank you. The Marine Band of the Royal Netherlands Navy will now play a musical intermezzo. An address will now be given by Mr. Emil Rumer, the King's Commissioner for the Province of Limburg. Your Excellencies, Generals, <clears throat> Veterans and Families, Ladies and Gentlemen, 
For me, this is the first time that I stand here as governor of Limburg. How impressive it feels to be surrounded by 10,000 names. 8,000 of those on the graves behind me. The remaining 2,000 on the walls of the missing in front of me. 10,000 names so gratefully and thankfully adopted by the people of Limburg that they were given a face, a story, and a soul. Names and stories which belong to my father's generation. My father, Chris Roemer, born in Rotterdam, was 22 years old in May of 1940 when he had to defend our country as a conscripted soldier against an overwhelmingly aggressive force and therefore against all odds. It was a time of total chaos in which he had disappeared near Dunkirk. His parents, his three brothers and three sisters feared for his life. But he returned only to find the city of Rotterdam in a total destruction and he submerged himself in the resistance. Things went well for a while until they took a turn for the worse when the aggressor captured him in October 1944 and questioned him under terrible circumstances and sentenced him to death by the bullet. But he got lucky. Right before he was about to be shot, the resistance was able to free him in spectacular fashion, just like in the movies. But George and Draco, on the other hand, did not have that luck. Born in New York, this construction worker found himself in that same October month as a tank gunner near Mayel in Limburg. A deserted village that had been occupied and then liberated on and on for weeks. Until by the end of that month, all hell broke loose and the aggressor, in an overwhelming display of power, completely overran his army unit. It really was hell, because no remnants of George were ever found. For his parents, brothers and three sisters, all that remained was his name here on the wall of the missing. He, George, was born in 1918, just like my old man. But unlike him, George was never able to marry the love of his life, to become father of four sons and a daughter and to build up a meaningful future. Instead, George made the greatest sacrifice, giving his life for our peace and freedom. Peace and freedom, which we never ever take for granted. Since less than 100 days ago, we have been seeing how, not far from here in Ukraine, the likes of Chris and George in resistance and in battle, once again rise up to an aggressor. Once again risk or even give their lives for peace, freedom and democracy. Again, cities are being destroyed. Again, people flee their homes and homelands. And yet again, many casualties lead to sorrow and grief. And with that terrible realization, I can only say at this very moment to George and all of his comrades, your sacrifice after all those year, years still means a world to us. Thank you. An address will now be given by Major General Peter Andrzejczyk, Deputy Commander, U.S. Naval Forces, Europe, Africa.
Realbo Bonobolar, His Excellency the Prime Minister Ruta, and the Honorable Verloop and Flo Groberg. Distinguished guests and all those gathered here today, I'm honored for the opportunity to be here with you at the Netherlands American Cemetery. This is my visit, my second visit to these hallowed grounds, and the setting is breathtaking. Memorial Day means different things to different people. <clears throat> for many, it merely marks the start of summer. And for a select few who have a sense of history, veterans, Gold Star families, and the Dutch people, it comes at a great deal of reflection and mourning. And for me personally, I bring you the perspective of a soldier who's commanded soldiers and lost soldiers in combat. But I'm also the son of a soldier, a first generation American whose father grew up in World War II in Europe. And he witnessed the destruction and the oppression. And his father never made it out of the Mauthausen concentration camp. But he also witnessed the liberation that would come to the United States and also serve in our armed forces and serve in combat. Memorial Day is a day of national awareness and solemn reverence, a day to honor military men and women who gave their lives in defense of our nation, our values, and our liberties and that of our allies and partners. And today, at the Netherlands American Cemetery, we honor more specifically American soldiers or service members who made the ultimate sacrifice more than 77 years ago. Many, if not all in attendance, know the story of this cemetery. And in the final months of 1944, after the liberation of Margraten from occupation, American soldiers needed a place to lay to rest those who gave their lives during the battles that waged in this area. The soldiers and the people of Margraten chose this beautiful orchard where today, as has been discussed, more than 10,000 American heroes are honored and some rest in quiet dignity and eternal sleep. And through the process of establishing this memorial, a unique friendship between the Netherlands and America was born. Local citizens have adopted graves, brought flowers year-round, and researched the lives of these American service members to honor their sacrifice. In my previous trip, I was fortunate enough to observe how this tradition has been passed down from one generation to the next. I observed elementary school kids reenact acts of bravery during Operation Market Garden. I witnessed the Market Garden Memorial Ceremony, and I've heard the numerous stories of deep and meaningful relationships that have built with families of the fallen. And as a soldier, I'd be remiss if I did not clearly articulate how extraordinary your expressions of gratitude are. No one who has witness to your genuine actions can never say that their service member died in vain. Despite your own losses and the trauma from World War II, you committed to preserving the memory and legacy of our fallen soldiers. And that's remarkable given that often what are offered are empty words and platitudes. So as I stand here on these hallowed grounds, I'm in awe of its splendor. All around are the physical symbols of the cost of victory and the preservation of the values which make up what we call civilization. These symbols come in the form of a memorial tower, a reflecting pool, a court of honor, a magnificent monuments, groomed burial plots, with headstones set in long curves and a tree-lined mall to the rear. And no detail is too small, and the ornate finishes are worthy of those who rest here. Now some wonder why we gather to celebrate Memorial Day year after year. Others wonder why we preserve and maintain such beautiful shrines to our service members worldwide. And here specifically in Margotten, some may wonder why after 75 years of peace, we continue to hold this annual ceremony. First, we do it because it's our solemn duty to never forget their sacrifice and we owe them and their loved ones a memorial and resting place that is worthy of their sacrifice, regardless of how far from home. Gold Star families whose lives have been shattered will never question the depths we're willing to go through to show our gratitude. For many, they've lost everything. And for a soldier or a soldier to be, and there are many soldiers in attendance today, it sends a clear message that they'll be properly cared for if they perish in combat. And this, this contributes to our fighting spirit, which is an intangible characteristic in combat 
that can overcome the force with superior numbers and equipment. And second, we celebrate this for the sake of others who don't serve. It serves as a constant reminder that freedom is but bought cheaply, is not bought cheaply. It has a cost, it imposes a burden, and that burden is that we all must do our utmost to carry out what must have been their final wish, that no other generation of young men and women will ever have to share their experiences and repeat their sacrifice. Ronald Reagan said it best long before he was the president. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream, and it must be fought for and protected and handed on to them to do the same. What should be ever to all at this time is that the battle between good and evil is an eternal one. For good to prevail, we must have brave souls who are always willing to meet the dark cloud on the horizon, regardless of the costs. I want to personally thank the citizens of Margaretten for your dedication and selflessness in maintaining these sacred grounds, and to the Dutch citizens all over the country for your friendship and your commitment to our collective security in the NATO alliance. For it is only in unity that we can stand stronger together. Thank you. Chief Rabbi to the Jewish Chample Chaplaincy, Sibach, will now offer a prayer. Will the audience please rise and remain standing after the prayer? Words, words do not suffice to express the gratitude we feel for those who have been laid to rest on our soil. Young people from afar who came here to fight for our liberty and died a violent and lonely death on foreign soil, far from the warm embrace of their family and loved ones. To them I say, you are no longer alone. Through your sacrifice, we have become your family and you have become our loved ones. We are and will always be eternally grateful to you and indebted to your sacrifice. Now using the traditional Jewish memorial prayer, we entrust them and their souls into God's loving embrace. Eil malei rachamim shochen bameromim Hametzei menucha nechona Tachat kamfei ha-shechina Bemalot kedoshim u-teorim Kezohar harakia meirim u-mazhirim Lenishmot kol anikbarim po Hamelech berachama virachim aleyem Vilavelem ha-shalom ve'al menuchatam yei shalom Venomar amen O oh God, full of compassion, who dwells on high, God of love and forgiveness, abounding in loving kindness, grant perfect rest beneath the cover of your presence to all those men and women who have been to lay, laid to rest in this place. Shelter them among the holy and pure, whose lights shine as the stars in the heavens. Remember unto them all the meritorious and pious deeds which they wrought while on earth, and open unto them the gates of righteous and light, the gates of pity and grace. May, may their souls find rest and peace in the glory of your eternal love, sheltered by your everlasting kindness. Amen. And to those who are mourning the passing of a loved one, the Lord has spoken thus unto man. As one whom his mother comforts, so I, the Lord God, will comfort you. Your sun shall set no more, nor your moon wane, for the Lord shall be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended. And there shall come a time when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they learn war any more. And then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all peoples will see this together. Amen. The laying of the wreaths will now begin. 
Will the audience please remain standing? On behalf of His Majesty the King, Rear Admiral Ludger Brumelau. States of America, the Honorable Maria Verlo. Now be seated. On behalf of the cabinet, Prime Minister Mark Hrutz. On behalf of Canada, the Honorable Lisa Helfen. On behalf of France, the Honorable Louis Vassy.
behalf of Germany, the Honorable Edgar Ganson. On behalf of New Zealand, the Honorable Susanna Gordon. On behalf of Poland, the Honorable Marcin Zapelek. On behalf of the United Kingdom, the Honorable Joanna Roper. On behalf of the Minister of Defense and the Netherlands Armed Forces, Vice Admiral Budwin Boots.
on behalf of the United States Armed Forces, Major General Peter Andrzejczyk. On behalf of Allied Joint Forces Command Brunsum, General Jurg Vollmer. On behalf of the province of Limburg, Governor Emil Krumer, On behalf of the town of Eisden Margraten, Mayor Shekhar Cox. On behalf of the city of Maastricht, Mayor Anne-Marie Pentestrake.
For the last wreath, on behalf of the American Battle Monuments Commission, ABMC Commissioner Florent Groberg. Javelin Boss will now give the closing prayer. Please rise and remain standing for the playing of taps, a moment of silence, and the flyover. During the playing of taps, will the gentlemen please take off their hats and the military members render the hand salute. Dear all, I would like to say a prayer at the end of this ceremony. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the peace you gave us in Europe 77 years ago and now. We will remember those who gave their lives to establish this peace. They made the highest sacrifice. They gave their lives for our freedom and we honor them. We pray for their families who have to live with these losses and still experience a gap in their family lives. We ask you to comfort them, give them peace in their hearts and the strength to surrender their grief and loss, to lay it down in your merciful hands. We thank you for the peace you gave us in Christ and for the assignment contained therein, to live in peace with our neighbors, contemporaries, even with our enemies. And we think about the veterans of all wars and missions. We pray for the wounded, physically, mentally, and morally, who live in these days, and who have to live with this past every day who have been convicted to see before them the cruel images of destruction and terror. We think of them and imagine their agony and pain. We bring it to your attention. Give us the strength to be there for them, to listen to their stories, to support and love them as you loved us. Even when it's difficult and asks a lot from us. As we all know, war corrupts and destroys. What once was good and worthy of love, forgive us and help us to survive. And with the help of the Spirit of Christ to create a new world. And finally, we are looking forward to your kingdom that will come one day Help us to live in this trust and conviction forever and ever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the video monitors for the viewing of the Netherlands American Cemetery visitor film, which will be played in the visitor center to be opened in 2023. began with the German invasion of Poland in 1939. By 1940, German forces were terrorizing Europe. In a matter of months, the Nazi offensive swept through Denmark, Norway, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. Standing between the Axis powers and their plans for global domination were ordinary Americans called upon to make extraordinary sacrifices. It is to honor each of them that this sacred place was created. By 1942, seven months after entering the war, the United States joined the British in the strategic bombing campaign, attacking vital German infrastructure and cities from above. James and Edward Norton, twin brothers from Conway, South Carolina, took to the skies in the same plane as pilot and co-pilot on May 17, 1943. Their aim was to bomb the gas works in Nazi-occupied Harlem in the Netherlands. These missions to degrade the German war machine were critical and dangerous. The range limitations of fighter escorts left bombers vulnerable to targets heavily defended by anti-aircraft guns, radar, and the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe. Anti-aircraft fire brought the Norden's plane down into the cold North Sea. The body of 2nd Lieutenant James Norton came ashore in German-occupied Dutch territory and was temporarily buried in a Dutch civilian cemetery. His twin, 2nd Lieutenant Edward Norton, was never recovered. They were 22. A year later, the tide of the war was turning, and on June 6, 1944, D-Day, Allied troops made the long-awaited invasion of Western Europe, landing in force along the Normandy coast. American, British, Canadian, and other Allied soldiers overcame withering fire on the landing beaches, breaching the Nazis' Atlantic Wall. After bloody fighting in the hedgerows of Normandy, the Allies broke out of the beachhead in mid-July and advanced rapidly across France. Hitler's forces were in retreat but following the liberation of Maastricht, the Allies reached the end of their supply line. Private First Class John Rigopoulos had been among the first paratroopers to land behind enemy lines on D-Day. Now, his company was called upon to take part in another assault that would put the Germans on their heels. Hoping to outflank the Siegfried Line, 390 miles of bunkers, fortifications, and tank traps that defended the German border, the Allies focused on a narrow front in the Netherlands. Operation Market Garden was a bold airborne and ground attack 
to seize nine key bridges and secure a route into northern Germany. But the plan proved too ambitious. On September 20th, 1944, Regopolis was part of a unit that had just crossed the river wall in fragile canvas boats. As they moved along a railroad embankment, the men came under enemy fire. Hit in the chest, Regopolis fell facing the enemy. He was 23. The work of caring for the American dead fell to the U.S. Army Graves Registration Service. In the fall of 1944, near the town of Margraten, a small village of 1,500 people, the Graves Registration Service converted a fruit tree orchard into the U.S. Military Cemetery Margraten, which would later become the Netherlands American Cemetery. As American soldiers prepared to invade Germany, this quiet farmland would soon be transformed. By November 1944, after fierce fighting, the Allies had finally broken through the Siegfried Line. For the first time, German soldiers were forced to fight in their fatherland. Sergeant Morel Stenet assigned to the 2nd Ranger Battalion, fought to keep German reinforcements at bay in the Hürtgen Forest. On December 7, 1944, Stenet's unit was caught in a brutal onslaught. Despite being wounded, he helped an injured comrade, selflessly insisting, in colorful language, that the other Ranger be taken to safety first. By the time help returned, it was too late. Sergeant Stinnett was 22. As the bitter winter of 1944 deepened, the Allies continued to fight in the Hürtgen Forest and along the Siegfried Line. A week after Sergeant Stinnett's death, they heroically withstood the last-ditch German offensive known as the Battle of the Bulge. And in February, American troops overwhelmed German forces in the Hürtgen Forest. As they retreated, the Germans destroyed the discharge valves of an upriver dam, flooding the Ruhr Valley and delaying the Allied crossing of the Ruhr River until February 23, 1945. Just two weeks later, the Allies crossed the southern Rhine River. The fallen arrived at the Netherlands American Cemetery faster than could be buried, forcing the U.S. Army to appeal to the citizens of Margraten for help. The local population turned out in force, digging enough graves in just two days to lay the casualties to rest. By April 1945, Allied units were advancing into Germany through different regions, fighting their way towards Berlin. Although the outcome of the war was no longer in question, American soldiers continued to pay a heavy price for every mile they advanced. Sergeant William Allen and his men had fought their way through France, Luxembourg, Belgium, and into Germany. On April 19th, Sergeant Allen volunteered to deliver hot food to soldiers who had been fighting that day. On the way back, his vehicle hit a mine. William Allen was 28. For many service members, like Sergeant Allen, the final days of the war in Europe were no less dangerous than the first. Dorothy Jane Burge was a Red Cross worker who, along with her sister Grace, followed the American troops into Germany. On May 1st, she was riding in a captured German plane when the pilot lost control. 
Dorothy Jane Burge was 29. Her sister wrote to the family back home. She will be buried with the boys with whom she has worked, lived, and loved. My dearest darling, I keep saying to myself, it can't be too long and we'll all be going home. I know it sounds crazy. Dear son, yes, we did you have a good time up at Grandma and Grandpa's house? I sure would have liked to have been home with you and Mommy, but we have to make the Germans quit fighting first. Each attack is harder now. Last summer, I really didn't give a damn. Now that I've weathered it so well this far, I keep thinking that I might really get back. Do things ever look bright? Berlin nearly surrounded. Almost every army on the Western Front across the Rhine. Pretty soon now, and you'll have me cluttered. I'll have to say goodnight for now as it is getting dark. I miss you both and love you both very much. Your son, Joe. Until the next letter, I'm saying goodnight. Loving you always. Ed. Take good care of mommy for me. Daddy has to go now, so goodbye for now. now this is kind of a novel way to wish you a very good end the event that I don't get home. I think I'll have to uh, get ready to sign off. Don't forget that I love you, my darling, and uh, I'll be home soon to see you. Germany officially surrendered on May 8, 1945. General Eisenhower had promised that no soldier would be buried in enemy soil, and so Americans who had fallen and been temporarily buried in Germany were reinterred to friendly soil in cemeteries like Margraten. After the war, many of these soldiers' remains were repatriated to cemeteries in the U.S., while other families chose to lay their loved ones to rest in the lands they helped liberate. The American Battle Monuments Commission renders perpetual care for the over 10,000 Americans honored at the Netherlands American Cemetery, ensuring that time will not dim the glory of their deeds. Every name inscribed on the wall of the missing, every name engraved into the thousands of headstones, represents an immeasurable personal sacrifice. But together, these fallen American heroes remind us of our dedication to freedom and the profound strength of unity. Please stand and remain in place while the colors, escorted by the honor guard, are retired.
It is requested that guests and spectators remain in place while the official party and their spouses depart the cemetery. On behalf of the American Battle Monuments Commission and the staff of the Netherlands American Cemetery, we would like to thank everyone who gave their support to make this ceremony possible. The ceremony is now concluded. We thank you for your attendance. You are welcome to walk through the cemetery grounds. We hope to see you again next year.